So, after my acquisition, we can go to one of these images. Let's go to this one. And then we can press measure. We go to 4D auto LVQ. And then you see immediately we have this screen. This screen shows uh, all three apical views and one short axis view. In order to align uh, all apical views and uh, be able to avoid for shortening, the first step is, go, is to go to short axis view, change our short axis in order to, in order to have a perfect four chamber view. So we change the short axis with, uh, with the pointer being like a circle. And uh, at the same time, we look at the left image, at the left view, where, where we see a four chamber. Then we go to two chamber view. We align also this view. The green line should be in the middle of mitra valve and go up to the apex of uh, the left ventricle. And after doing that, you can see that immediately we have a very nice apical long axis view without any foreshortening. So this is the next step. After that, we go to end diastolic volume and we press, you, you can see the pointer now is, is like a cross. We check the apex, we check the middle of the mitral valve and immediately we have in all three views a delineation of the endocardium. If we don't like it, then we can go and change it with our cross. For example, here you can see that in, in two-chamber view, uh, we have papillary muscles and trabeculation. And you need to know that in order to um, reach the volumes of uh, cardiac MRI, we should go uh, approximately one uh, millimeter inside the endocardium and we should avoid trabeculation and papillary muscles. So, uh, if we like the images, then we can scan in, in, any, of the ap in, in any of the apical views. We can scan uh, the left ventricle from the base to the apex and at the same time watch at the short axis view if we are okay with the delineation. If there is some part we don't like it, then we can do it again. We should always be careful not to include papillary muscles like here or trabeculation. We should go into the myocardium. Uh, this should be better. And of course, we should also include the LVOT. So, after uh, we have the endocardium at end diastole, we go to end systole. We check again the apex, the mid of the mitra valve. We change um, the borders of the endocardium in systole. And when we are happy with our left ventricle, we press volume waveform. And that way we have um, an estimation of 4D volumes, uh, end diastolic, end systolic, and ejection fraction. And again, we can do that offline at the Ecopack workstation 
uh, w uh, in order to achieve the best measurements, but you have to know that even with this semi-automated method, the inter-observer variability for ejection fraction and volumes is uh, very low. So, we, we, you don't have to worry about uh, very small differences because overall, uh, all of us who will measure uh, for the ejection fraction in one patient, we will find almost the same um, numbers. So, this is the way we can uh, measure uh, for the ejection fraction and volumes uh, on the machine live. 